New Zealand corvette Arbutus left Auckland recently to show the flag in New Zealand's Pacific Island territories. The voyage took the Arbutus to the Cook Islands, Samoa and the Tokelaus, all under New Zealand administration. First port of call was the islands of the Cook Group and a national film unit cameraman was on board to make a record of the crews. Our first glimpse of land was a low palm-covered island of the southern Cooks. We lay well offshore and the islanders came out in their locally built surf boats to take us in over the reef. They were expert seamen and brought everyone ashore except the duty watch. The boats came in through gaps in the coral ledge around the island and several of the leading citizens came down to greet us. first village, the local boys' brigade turned out a guard of honour, and everyone took a holiday to meet the Navy and make us welcome. The captain's first duty was to inspect a group of returned servicemen of the First World War. Most of them had served in Egypt. After the inspections, Samuel Ariki, the paramount chief of the island, led off the dancing. Undoubtedly, the best show was a dance by pupils of the village school. The natives' favourite game is cricket, and they soon had a match organised with the ship. The village green is as familiar here as it is in England. The islanders have a magnificent eye and hit everything in sight. They won this match handsomely. The crew gave them some lessons in softball. It was the first time the islanders had played, but you wouldn't have guessed it. The game was the thing, and everyone, spectators and players, enjoyed it thoroughly. In return, we were given a demonstration of poor rolling. The poor is a disc of hardwood and it's propelled by a grass string wound carefully around its edge. Teams compete to see who can bowl the poor furthest down the 200 yard track. Points are scored by the man who sends the poor 200 yards down over the finishing line. Everywhere we went there was the umakai, the native feast. It is definitely a community affair. Everyone brings along a contribution and all the villagers help in preparing the food. Chicken, pig, taro, yam, bananas and always coconuts turned out in a variety of dishes. <laughs> Officers and men sat down cross-legged to the feast under an archway of palms. <laughs> Some members of the party seem to have been through all this before. When we left, gifts were brought down to the beach for us to take aboard. 
It was typical of the people's hospitality. We found that the Navy was always welcome in the Cook Islands, and we left with a high opinion of the character and friendliness of the islanders. Northwest from the Cook Islands group, New Zealand administrated territory extends to include the Tokelaus, three islands in a strategic position near the equator. The Arbutus included this area in her Pacific cruise. At our first landfall, we were met by a flotilla of outrigger canoes, which take the place of the surf boats of the more southern islands. We had brought up an official party from the Samoan administration, and they went ashore with us. Samoa looks after the total hours for the New Zealand government. Among the official party was Colonel Volker, the administrator of Samoa, and with him Dr. Loftel and Mr. Johnson, our metrological officer. Each island is equipped with weather recording instruments, and natives are trained to take readings. From this information, they decide when it's safe to make canoe trips between the islands. The service is greatly appreciated, for many canoes were lost at sea before it was begun. Since the war, New Zealand has provided clothing and other goods that aren't in local supply. The biggest amount is for soap. All goods are bought from the administration with money received for copra and from sale of the fans and mats for which the Tokelaus are famous. We spent some time at the trading post and then had a look around the clean, well-kept villages. There we were besieged by youngsters who couldn't quite make up their minds what it was all about. They were a healthy lot, but the Navy arrived just in time to assist in saving the life of a girl who was found to have a perforated appendix. Dr. Loptel decided to operate immediately, assisted by the leading sick birth rating from the Arbutus. The anaesthetic was administered by the island's native medical practitioner, and trained native nurses helped during the operation. It was delicate surgery in primitive conditions, and the girl's relatives watched anxiously outside. The operation was a complete success, and the girl recovered. It was an example of how the administration has trained local people in modern techniques, and brought many public services to the islands. Before we left the Tokelaus, Colonel Volker spoke to village meetings on the policy of the administration and heard the opinions and points of view of the islanders. There was the last celebration, and the Navy was entertained with songs and dancing. It had been a happy and successful cruise. Another Pacific cruise ends, and the Arbutus will return to duties in New Zealand waters. The cruise has helped in training of naval personnel and in the work of the island's administration. Above all, it has extended goodwill between New Zealand and the people of her island territories.